On episode 289 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we discuss making it through the holidays. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 289. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Hello, and thank you for being a part of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. I am so glad you're here today. i uh, going to do something kind of special. It's been a while since I've done a solo show, and uh, I kind of miss it. So looking forward to having just kind of you and me today as we go through this uh, this episode. But uh, before I get into it, I thought I'd kind of give you an update. I, I was on vacation last week, spent some time at the beach. Uh, a great opportunity for me to decompress and de-stress, and man, did I need it. Uh, it has been a very tough year for me uh, with my work and everything that's going on. And so it was just good to get away, uh, play some volleyball, get some scabs on my knees, uh, just have some fun, relax, and uh, just really kind of reboot. And I, and I feel a lot better going into the holiday season. But knowing that going into the holiday season, uh, that's also a time that many of us feel like we lose ground on some of the lifestyle changes we've made this year and some of the improvements we've made in our health and fitness and unfortunately, during the holiday season, uh, quite a few of us do have a tendency to regain some of the weight we may have lost or just gain weight, even if we didn't lose any. Uh, so it really does set us back a little bit, makes us feel like we're set back. So I wanted to give you some strategies uh, for how you can deal with the holidays in a more healthful uh, and fit way. And so we're going to get into that in a minute. But I did want to make one announcement before we kind of get into the show. I am going to launch a sugar challenge uh, this month uh, at the on the 26th, and so you'll need to, if you're going to do this, you'd need to sign up by the 25th, which is only a few days away. But you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash sugar and sign up for the 28 day sugar challenge. Now you might ask yourself, well, why would I sign up for a sugar challenge during the holidays? Well, this is a perfect time to do it. And what I've done with it being a 28 day challenge, starting it right after Thanksgiving. And right before Christmas, this is a great opportunity for you to kind of battle that bulge and make sure that what we're doing during the holidays, uh, we can do uh, without putting on a lot of extra weight because we're actually going to go through this sugar challenge and that's going to make things a lot better for us as we kind of go through this season. So it is a challenge. I encourage you to find an accountability buddy as you go through this process, but really do check it out. Uh, I've had such great results. I've heard such great things from folks in the past about having these sugar challenges, and it's been a while since I've had one. I, I am going to start relaunching them and kicking them off again, uh, and I'm starting one in November, uh, which, again, is counterintuitive, but I'm telling you, this is the best time of year to get started uh, because it's the best time is now. And start it now. So go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash sugar and join me on the sugar challenge. There is a small charge. Uh, it's $7, but that's only to make sure that you have a commitment to this. And I found over the past that when someone puts just even a little bit of money on something, uh, they want to use it. They want to make it happen. So this is a little lock in on you. It's a little mind trick. Uh, it's not a lot of money. Uh, it's just 25 cents a day for this. And I'm, I'm going to be providing a lot of content, a lot of information, uh, and I'll be available to you. So, you know, the emails you get from me, if you respond to those emails, I'm there. I'm there with you. And I'm on this challenge with you as well. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. I'm really looking forward to having you on this challenge. So please do go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash sugar and learn more about the sugar challenge that we're going to have here through November and December. Hope to see you there. So as we get into the holidays, you know, one of the interesting things uh, about our cultures around the world is that we tend to celebrate events with food. And so food has become a very big part of how we celebrate. And it makes sense, you know, as, as things have been harsh uh, over the years, you know, when we look at uh, Thanksgiving in the United States was typically a time when, uh, you know, the planting season was over, the harvest was over, and, and basically now we're reaping that harvest. We've got all these autumn foods uh, that have come in, and so this is a great time for us to celebrate uh, the ending of a season and the beginning of the winter. 
Uh, and so, yes, it was it was a great time to take all of that bounty and be thankful for it and really celebrate with friends and family uh, over food. And then, of course, uh, we get into Christmas, and Christmas is a time when we're talking about kids, and that gets us into candies and cakes, uh, and unfortunately, maybe a little bit of alcohol, uh, but that's okay. Uh, the problem is, though, we tend to have a party pretty much every week, every day, all the way through from November to the end of the year. And that's where the real problems come in, is that we're challenged with and, and tempted by these uh, these decadent foods, these over-sugary foods, these, these bad fat foods that are, are out there. And they're just every day and they're constant. And, and you know you're going to be seeing it. There's going to be parties at work. There's going to be parties with friends. Uh, there's going to be your own family events. And all of those are going to have a lot of sugary foods, a lot of pies and cakes and candies and whatnot. Um, so what I want to do is try to give you a couple strategies to help you work your way through this season and, and not make this such a bad deal for you, uh, you know, because Again, most people are gaining weight during this season and they get to the new year and that's when it kind of hits them. It's like, wow, I took a step back on my lifestyle and I took a step back in my health and fitness. Um, and now they, you know, they hit January with a storm. Uh, but I'm saying you can do some things now that will help you prevent falling backwards too far over this course of the season. So my, my first strategy is when you know you're going to do something like a party or whatnot, uh, you can plan for it. And, and what I like to do is I like to pre-fill. And what I mean by pre-filling the tank, for me, what that means is I'm going to drink some water and I'm going to eat something that has a good healthy fat, some fiber, and a little bit of protein. So some healthy foods for my body that's going to satiate my hunger before I go into an event. Uh, to a party or whatnot. And what that's going to allow me to do is is, is a couple things. One is I, I won't be famished, so I won't be binging on the, the, bad, the bad foods that I don't want to eat, um, but I can have a little bit of it and feel satiated because I'm already full. So I don't feel like I have to eat an entire piece of cake. I can take a piece of cake. I can stand there and talk to my colleagues or talk to my family with a little bit of cake or a little bit of pie sitting on my plate. Um, I can take a dab taste here and there which is great, but I don't have to feel like I have to fill up on those things. I don't, I'm not using those to satiate my hunger because my hunger is already satiated. So I'm eating just a little bit of it, um, and that, that's going to go a long way towards keeping your total intake of those bad foods down. So before you go into an event, pre-fill the tank with water, good fats, some fiber, and a little bit of protein. And I think you'll find that you don't eat nearly as much of the bad foods while you're at that event. Another one, and, and I talked about this a little bit, is mini portions. So a lot of times they're going to give you a big slice of the cake. And what you might want to find is that, okay, maybe there's another family member or two. And you say, hey, let's take this piece of pie and let's split it in three. And that way we're not eating a whole piece of pie. Uh, some of your family members will probably go along with that. Others might not. They might want their whole piece of pie, and that's fine. But cut yourself a smaller portion. Don't feel like you have to take that big old portion of pie, a big old piece of pie, because that's the way they chose to cut it. Cut off a little corner of it, uh, enough for you to kind of get a taste, to enjoy it, to honor the person that provided that. Because, you know, again, it, sometimes it feels a little uncomfortable when everybody else is eating pie. Uh, you know, your aunt brought it to the party. Everybody's enjoying the pie. And you're saying, no, that's not on my food uh, choices. I'm not going to eat that. You know, come on, um, that's going to come off as a little rude and, and you're not going to feel comfortable necessarily doing that. And there's no need to. Uh, you can enjoy that pie. Just get a much smaller mini portion of the pie. And I think you'll find that that goes a long way. The next one is to go slow. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times when we're sitting there and we're having conversations with folks uh, and we're eating, we're, we're kind of mindlessly eating. And, and as a result, we're eating faster and we're getting way past that point of full. And I know you know that feeling where you've eaten way, way too much and you're not feeling well afterwards because you just overstuffed yourself. And that's because you didn't let the normal hormones that, that manage satiation actually do their job. And so what you want to do is you want to slow down. And what I would typically do is say, take a small bite have some conversation, but don't be eating while you're having the conversation. Let's let the conversation go for a little while and then come back and eat another small bite. And what you'll find is you get to that point of satiation and enjoyment 
much faster and you're much more cognizant of the food and as the result you're probably enjoying it much much more so with food when i say slow down it's it's really smaller bites take time with it put the fork down between each bite uh, just really kind of enjoy the food relish it uh, rather than just golfing it down and and, and focusing on other things um, and when it comes to alcohol, obviously, this is a season when we're probably going to drink a little bit more than we would the rest of the year. Uh, what I would say is probably pad it with something in between, like have have a glass of water in between each drink. And again, try to try to run those drinks out longer, enjoying them longer, enjoying the taste of it, because most of those beverages, be it eggnog, wine or whatnot, are actually very good tasting and you enjoy them. But take the time to really relish them rather than just drinking them down. And then again, a little bit of water in between each drink is going to help you stay hydrated uh, and deal with the alcohol much, much better. Okay, my fourth strategy is more movement. And so what you want to do is you want to realize that you are probably taking in a few more calories. Uh, uh, and so some burning some calories, doing some extra movement is not going to be a bad thing at this point in time. I'm not a big proponent of calories in, calories out. I don't believe you can out-exercise a bad diet. But if you occasionally have a little bit more calories in or a little bit more sugar in your diet, go out and go for a walk. Uh, you know, take the family out. That's another, it's another great time. You know, uh, people are doing uh, their Christmas lights or, you know, people are doing caroling or whatnot. Uh, take some time to go some places and walk around and enjoy the sights and sounds of the season. Uh, and that's going to go a long way towards helping you keep towards a good general fitness. So pay a little bit more attention this season to how much you're moving around and try to move a little bit more. I'm not saying to go down to the point of having a Fitbit and, and tracking your steps and all that unless, you know, you, you enjoy that. Uh, you like the data and you want to keep doing that. Uh, push your steps up by all means. But I'm just saying realize that this is a season for you to enjoy uh, you know, I do all my shopping by Amazon, but, you know, obviously if I'm going to eat a little bit more, maybe just taking a trip down the mall and doing some window shopping would not be a bad idea uh, to walk around the mall uh, to have a good time, to go see some sights and sounds, maybe walk through and see some lights, go down to the city square and, and enjoy some things down there. Uh, but moving around a little bit more is going to, again, help your body stay more fit. It's going to help you burn a few more calories during this period of time where you might be taking in a few more than you would at other points in time in the year. So more movement is going to be good during this period of time. And then finally, focus on friends and family. I mean, that's what this holiday season is really all about, is really about your friends and family and just kind of celebrating the time that you have together, being thankful for them, enjoying your time with them, sharing gifts, sharing yourself, taking some time off and spending time with them. And so make the celebration be more about your friends and family than about the food. OK, um, this is not a time to stress over things like that. There's enough stress in the season, uh, you know, when you know your your mother-in-laws or whatnot is going to come over. Or this person or that person is going to come over and, you know, you know, there's this conflict or this thing or that thing that's happening to all of us all the time. So don't don't be so caught up in all of that. But take the time to enjoy your friends and family. Take the time to enjoy the season and, and try to not make it about the food. Try to not make it about worrying and stressing about whether you're eating too much or eating too little. Uh, the reality of it is this is a time to enjoy. Uh, this is a time to relish. Uh, there are some strategies I've given you today that I think will help make that a lot easier for you. And so I do want to recap this uh, because I do think taking some time to think about each of these strategies, keeping them top of mind throughout the season uh, is going to be important for you if you really want to maintain what you've accomplished this year and you want to feel good going into the next year that you didn't really do anything to uh, harm yourself through this season. And so in this do no harm season here, what we want to try to accomplish is first, OK, if we know there's an event coming up, we want to plan for it. And we want to pre-fill our tank. So we make sure that we're not hungry going into these events. And therefore, we're less likely to eat as much because we're not trying to satiate hunger. We're just enjoying the taste of the food and the company. Second, many portions. You know, cut the portions down. Uh, you don't have to eat a whole piece of pie to enjoy the pie. You don't have to eat a full you know, serving of the creamy mashed potato casserole thingy, you can have a small portion of that and, and enjoy the taste, enjoy the, the food. And again, it doesn't have to be this big honking serving. You can set your own little mini portions the way you want them. 
And then number two is to go slow, you know, realizing that your body takes some time for the signaling to work for your body to know that it's full. And so give it that time. The other side of being slow is it helps you really enjoy the food. So this is not a food that you're going to be eating all year round. Uh, you know, you're going to have your pie and the best way to have your cake and eat it too is to eat it very, very slowly and enjoy each and every bite so that it matters. It's, it's not food that you're putting in your mouth just to fill yourself up or just to fill up time. Uh, it is food that you're using to enjoy and, and, and food enjoyment is a very important part of being healthy and having a good lifestyle. And then with the alcohol, you know, pat it with water. Also take the time to enjoy the flavor. You know, a fine wine, a good wine, uh, eggnog, those types of things, they taste great. So don't be afraid to take your time, enjoy it. You know, I, I love a craft beer. And if I'm gonna have a craft beer, I'm gonna take the time to savor the smell, the taste, the flavor, and, and the texture, and, and all of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the time to really, really enjoy uh, what I'm drinking, what I'm doing, uh, because that's what this food is all about. And if I'm going to just do this this one time a year, I really want to make sure that I'm enjoying it, be it the food or the alcohol. Just go slow. And then next is let's get in a little bit more movement. You know, there's a lot of moving around, a lot of things we can do. Uh, a lot of people stay cooped up. The weather's a little bit cooler. Uh, get out, get out and have some fun. Get out and move around. Go to the mall, walk around. Um, go to see the lights. Go to, you know, visit friends. Walk around the neighborhood and say hello. All these different things that you can be doing because this is a season about friends and family, but let's also make it a season about just a little bit more movement uh, so that we're staying healthy and fit. And, you know, I want to close this out with, again, this is about friends and family. This is a season for uh, joy and fun. And, and so make it that. Uh, don't let yourself get stressed out about what you're doing, what your lifestyle is and, you know, what you can and cannot do. Just do it responsibly, understand why you're doing it, and, and, and enjoy. Enjoy the food, enjoy the flavors, enjoy all the things that the season brings. But above all, enjoy spending some time with your friends and family and rejoice in having them in your life. Be happy and thankful that they're there and let them know that. Uh, because again, being healthy is great. Being fit is wonderful. Uh, but what this life is really all about is being fulfilled and knowing that you're the best you you can be. And friends and family are a big, big part of making you that. If you enjoyed today's episode, would you please share it with friends and family and help them make it through the holidays? Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Leonard Lee now and discuss his book, CBD. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.